In June 2006, 18-year-old Brittany McCone delivered her valedictory speech. But in the middle of the speech, Brittany's microphone was cut off. And now she's taking her alma mater to court. David Brody explains why. Brittany McCone might look like just another 18-year-old, but she's not. How many 18-year-olds do you know who are suing their high school? It's a case that could be destined for the U.S. Supreme Court. Let's back up two months. June 15th, Henderson, Nevada. Valedictorian Brittany McComb is on stage to deliver her speech, a speech highlighting God's influence in her life. After quitting, this amazing sense of peace rushed over me, and I noticed after 15 years of sitting on the story time rug that there was someone standing above me trying to help me. God. But when she tried to mention how Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, all of a sudden... His love is so great that he gave up his, gave up his only son. Her microphone went dead. Was it a faulty outlet? A power surge? No, no. The school pulled the plug. Literally. John Whitehead heads the legal organization representing Brittany McComb. And she... Uh, had the microphone pulled, something that happens only in totalitarian regimes. Brittany knew the microphone would be shut off. That's because she had to submit a copy of her speech to the school. They warned her not to read her version or they would cut off her microphone. CBN News obtained a copy of the speech. The school cut out this part. God's love is so great that he gave his only son up to an excruciating death on a cross so his blood would cover all of our shortcomings and our relationship with him could be restored. They cited that as identifying a particular religion. They also didn't like the part where she wrote, quote, that is why Christ died. And they also crossed out a part where they believe she was proselytizing. She wrote, quote, I can guarantee 100%, no doubt in my mind, that if you choose to fill yourself with God's love rather than the things society tells us will satisfy us, you will find success you will find your self-worth. In a rare interview, I spoke with Brittany at her parents' home outside of Las Vegas. I was very convicted that I was doing the right thing, and my heart was very much in the right place. The fact of the matter is you can listen and accept it, or listen. you don't have to listen. You can tune it out. Most people tune out valedictory speeches. Officials here at Foothill High School in Nevada and the Clark County School District would not go on camera with us. Since this case is under litigation, they think the best thing right now is to do no talking at all. After all, the principal and the assistant principal here are both targeted in the lawsuit. Now, school officials have said since day one that they are just following previous court rulings on what can and cannot be said at a high school graduation. Cases in Nevada are heard by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. They've previously ruled that graduation speeches are school-sponsored, and that means generic religious references are okay, but proselytizing is not. Christina Littlefield has been following this case for the Las Vegas Sun. The Ninth Circuit really leaves no room for the student to have the right to free speech in, in, a, in a graduation speech where it is school-sponsored event, and that's kind of the key here. The school district had to follow the Ninth Circuit ruling. The question is, is the Ninth Circuit ruling the right interpretation of the law? The school district's rules on graduation speeches allowed for them to give a disclaimer before Brittany's speech, but the school district decided to follow the court's rulings instead. The Ninth Circuit has said, now, once a school district starts to edit the speech, it becomes school-sponsored. So schools must stop the speech or risk violating the Establishment of Religion Clause in the First Amendment. Whitehead says really that makes no America sense. Today? People are not stupid. They know schools don't endorse religion. They knew that, that young girl up there speaking wasn't speaking for the government. Once she diverted from the school-approved version, she was a private individual speaking in a limited public forum. That's the big difference. Defying school authorities was not easy for Brittany. She remembers what she was thinking the day before the speech. I'm going to throw up. What is going to happen tomorrow? No, I'm so scared. But after a night filled with prayer, her mind cleared. I woke up the next morning, and God really gave me peace and a calm about, you know, what I was supposed to do. But she gave her word to the school that she would read their edited version. What about going back on that agreement? At that moment, I didn't feel like, you know, I wasn't thinking correctly or, you know, maybe I was just like frazzled, but 
I, I do admit that after the speech, you know, I was like, wow, that's, you know, that's something that, you know, is not Christ-like, lying to someone about what you're going to do. But you know what? That's God's grace. Not everyone sees it that way. One of Brittany's teachers, Karen Vaughn, wrote a letter to the Las Vegas Review Journal saying, quote, you made a promise. If you break that promise, you would be lying. And that is a sin. She went on to say, quote, this is not the proper platform for a sermon. All of the people in this captured audience have come to see someone graduate from high school. You do not have the right to ruin their graduation experience. Brittany figured criticism and, um, would find her eventually. So I, I've tried to guard my heart against that and realize that the only words that influence me should be Christ. But it's those words that she couldn't say about Christ that make her wonder what's happened to her free speech. They're telling me I can't say that. I can't say Jesus Christ has changed my life to make me a caring citizen, to make me a successful person, to give me hope for my future, to give me purpose. Are we saying that people who are religious can't attempt to persuade other people? Well, if not, they don't have free speech rights. So what we're saying to religious people at that point is the First Amendment doesn't apply to you anymore. This issue of what is and what is not proselytizing at graduation speeches may have to be settled once and for all by the Supreme Court. Regardless of whether her case gets there, it's adding to that body of cases out there that say this is a legitimate question. This is a question the Supreme Court needs to weigh in on. So while Brittany waits to see what will come of all of this, she says it makes sense that saying the name of Jesus would cause all this controversy. In the Bible, it does say Christ's name is offensive. And I'm like, it's a name of love and forgiveness and mercy and, and joy. Brittany's convinced it's all that, but for now at least, it's also a name that's been silenced at Foothill High School. David Brody, CBN News, Henderson, Nevada. Thanks, David. The First Amendment says Congress, Congress shall pass no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The First Amendment deals with Congress. It doesn't deal with a school district in Nevada, for starters, nor <clears throat> does it deal with some little girl who happens to be number one in her class. That's how come she's the valedictorian. She had the highest academic score of anybody in her class. That's why she's giving that valedictory address, and she has a perfect right to say, I'm standing here before you because of my faith in Jesus Christ. He helped me study, or whatever she wants to say. That's freedom and Congress cannot restrict the freedom thereof. That's the other part of the First Amendment. The Ninth Circuit is out of control. It is the most um, reversed circuit in America. They have more reversals by the Supreme Court than any other court. And uh, <clears throat> there's some move afoot to literally break up the Ninth Circuit because uh, the stuff that comes out of there is, is just in, in, you know, an abomination. For example, in God We Trust, they want to take off of our motto and some of the things on your coins. It goes on and on. But anyhow, the Supreme Court has got to deal with this thing once and for all, and this is private, free speech of a student. Pulling the plug of a microphone, yes, takes you back to the bad days of communism in the Soviet Union. Well, you can find out more about this story. Watch Brittany McComb's speech at our website, cbn.com.